Welcome back to Learn Your Radiology, everyone. Uh, we're going to continue this lecture about autoimmune and inflammatory disease, and uh, we're going to talk today about mass-like inflammatory diseases, and I've, I've given it that name. There's not really a great name for these uh, diseases, but these are the ones that are more likely to have mass-like components and to kind of resemble tumors. And there's really two main diseases that you think about in this condition. You think about sarcoidosis and you think about orbital inflammatory disease. In the previous videos, we've talked about uh, these demyelinating diseases and encephalitis. And uh, today we'll talk about these mass-like diseases and we'll leave these uh, other topics to the uh, future uh, lectures. So we'll continue that uh, in the next couple of weeks. But today we're gonna talk about sarcoidosis and inflammatory disease. And so these can have masses, they can look like tumors, and they can appear either in the CNS or in the orbits. And we're gonna take a look at uh, these today. So the case I'm gonna show you here is a 48 year old woman. She's got proptosis and worsening vision. Here you see some images from an MR and uh, you see she's got clear proptosis on the left. So, I mean, proptosis, you can take a look at the sort of orbit. This portion should kind of go through the center of the globe and uh, so like so, and should be sort of through that central third, but here this the globe is uh, pooched out there. This is a T2 and you see this kind of mass-like infiltration there. Uh, it's just sort of intermediate T2 stuff within the orbit. On a T1, you see loss of the normal fat. You kind of see loss of the planes of the extraocular muscles there. So you see like the medial rectus there. You kind of lose it. You don't see any of the extraocular muscles there. On diffusion, what you see is something that's kind of has intermediate diffusion signal and you really shouldn't be seeing anything at all within the orbit. So that's unusual there. Uh, here's just some coronal images through the same thing. So you have a T2 with fat saturation and you see this just kind of uh, inflammatory blob in the orbital apex there. The orbital fat is not suppressing. And similarly on T1, you have a kind of a fat, the orbital fat is displaced to the side and you have this mass here in the, in the orbital apex. On post-contrast imaging, you'll see that whole area enhances avidly. This little dot here centrally is the optic nerve that's actually kind of spared from this process, but it's just encased by all of this uh, avid enhancement here. Now, when you see this kind of infiltrating orbital mass, you have to think about a differential for these kinds of things. The orbital inflammatory diseases are the number one things you're thinking about. And this used to be called, uh, you know, pseudotumor and we don't really call it that anymore. Then it kind of became idiopathic orbital inflammation or IOI. But then we've increasingly learned that these are related to IgG4 or, uh, or related pathologies. And so now you can kind of divide it into two categories, the IgG4 related or the idiopathic. The other things you gotta think about are sarcoid. So sarcoidosis of the CNS can definitely look like this. Lymphoma, you can definitely have masses and an infiltrating type of appearance. And then metastatic disease to the orbit can definitely look like this as well, particularly with uh, breast cancer or melanoma. This is a case of orbital inflammatory disease though. As I pointed out, you can have the subset that's related to IgG4 or the type that's uh, still considered uh, to be idiopathic. It was called orbital pseudotumor, but uh, because it's uh, it, we're learning more about it, we're not really causing, we're not really calling it uh, pseudotumor anymore. What you see is what you see in this case. You have a dense infiltrate, you have orbital involvement with this kind of T2 intermediate to dark uh, signal uh, material, and you get avid enhancement. You can also have intracranial involvement, particularly along the uh, optic nerves and along the dura of the middle cranial fossa there. It's very common to see involvement in, in those areas. Now, IgG4 is also implicated in some other diseases uh, in addition to this orbital disease, including uh, pachymeningitis, lung disease, and autoimmune pancreatitis, uh, among other things. So it causes an autoimmune syndrome in the, the remainder of the body as well. So these patients may have additional findings uh, in other organs. Uh, these images just show you the findings that we saw in the MRIs uh, at the beginning of the case. You see this T2 intermediate material in the orbit. Uh, the orbital fat is replaced by a T1 uh, iso-intense material, some abnormal diffusion. And again, we've kind of gone through all of this. So I'll just show you again quickly. We've got T2 abnormality on fat saturation and uh, avid enhancement there. Again, uh, this was non-IgG4 related disease. So the patient did not have IgG4 abnormalities, but the appearance is going to be similar in these patients. 
Uh, this patient got treated with radiation. So this on image on the right here is a one-year follow-up. You see a lot of retraction, a little bit of scarring, but the orbital fat has returned. The mass effect has gotten better and uh, the proptosis is, is better there as well. So you can treat that with, with radiation. Our second case is a 32-year-old woman who has a questionable history of meningitis. I put meningitis in quotation marks there because we didn't really know what it was. It was in an outside hospital. The patient's now presenting with right-sided vision loss. Here you see a CT, and the CT is above the orbits, but uh, it's clearly not normal. You've got some edema in the sort of white matter of the frontal lobes, probably the genome of the corpus callosum. doesn't look quite normal, so that's uh, something you're kind of looking at. If you go into an MR through that same region, you'll see that it's markedly abnormal. Here you have a flare. You see some flare abnormality in the frontal lobe here. You've really lost your gray-white differentiation there. On T2, some of it, again, is kind of intermediate to dark T2, like not, not super bright. Uh, this is a gradient just showing you there's not, uh, not really a lot of blood products uh, associated with this process. Now, on post-contrast imaging, what you see is avid enhancement. So there's a ton of enhancement here. Some of this enhancement is leptomeningeal, so it's in the sulci, and it's kind of following uh, the sulci and sort of coating the, uh, the gyri there. And you see it uh, kind of along the surfaces of the corpus callosum there, for instance, and the basal cisterns here. And then some of it is nodular as well, so you see just sort of very solid enhancement in the basal cisterns there as well. This is just more images from this case. You see a coronal through there. If you take a look at this right optic nerve, it's swollen and T2 bright. You see some areas that clearly look nodular. This is a pre-contrast and a post-contrast. And you see these nodular areas of enhancement, some of which are probably in the leptomeninges and some of which look like they're in the parenchyma. Now, you have to have a differential for nodular leptomeningeal enhancement. Uh, there's three main things you're thinking about. Leptomeningeal uh, metastatic disease or carcinomatosis, uh, meningitis or some sort of infectious process, now, usually these are unusual pathogens like tuberculosis or fungal disease, and then sarcoidosis. Uh, this is a case of sarcoidosis, and I, I tell our residents that it's like a syphilis-like disease uh, in that it can look like uh, many different things. It can have many manifestations. And so if you're seeing some weird process, like definitely think about uh, sarcoidosis. Uh, the most classic appearance, though, is a basal or meningitis, where you get this nodular enhancement of the leptomeninges centered around the skull base. You can definitely have parenchymal nodules. You can have perivascular enhancement in the periventricular white matter. Uh, you can get sarcoidomas that tend to be T2 hypointense and have enhancement. Uh, those can be in the parenchyma as well. To work up these patients, you want to get a lumbar puncture. You want to look at ACE levels. You want to look at a chest X-ray and a chest CT because the vast majority of these patients are going to have sarcoidosis manifestations in the chest. Uh, here you see this is a different case, but you see the sort of classic appearance of sarcoid. You have this leptomeningeal enhancement that's kind of all over the place, uh, particularly in the posterior fossa here along the surface of the uh, midbrain and pons. Uh, here you see a little bit of parenchymal nodularity up there. So this is kind of the classic uh, sarcoidosis that you might see. Now, our case is kind of an extreme case. We've got a lot of leptomeningeal enhancement. It's centered in the anterior cranial fossa here. It's involving the optic nerves. So you have avid enhancement of that right optic nerve, which is why the patient was losing their vision, but a ton of parenchymal enhancement there. So you're kind of getting all of the features of sarcoidosis. This is just a dramatic manifestation. In summary, we've looked at two mass-like inflammatory diseases that you can get in the CNS. We saw orbital inflammatory disease, which typically involves the orbit and the eye. Uh, tends to involve the lacrimal glands. Uh, the, you want to consider IgG testing because much of it is related to IgG4 disease, although some of it is not. Uh, sarcoidosis can have a similar appearance. You can see it in the orbit as well, but it tends to be more frequently in the skull base and basal cisterns. You tend to get more leptomeningeal enhancement and you often have systemic disease. So you will see spine involvement uh, of the bones of the spinal cord. Uh, you'll have elevated ACE levels uh, sometimes as well, although that's somewhat nonspecific. So when you see these uh, diffuse processes that are mass, like think about these inflammatory conditions. Uh, thanks for tuning in uh, to this video. Be sure to check out the earlier videos on encephalitis and uh, other inflammatory diseases, and we'll be continuing this series in the coming weeks. So be sure to check back uh, to see when those videos are released. Thanks.